Advantages which um, uh, meet the standard uh, for absolute quantification and also uh, the, uh, the results rely on the reaction efficiency. And uh, on the other hand, we also uh, uh, the past five years uh, we observed the tremendous, uh, uh, tremendous, uh, 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 tremendous. Uh, 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 of the CRISPR based uh, diagnostic system, uh, which become very popular because uh, they have uh, 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 they, they show uh, very good specificity. Uh, one of the good methods uh, and very well known uh, of this CRISPR based uh, is the Stillwell method, uh, which they use the CRISPR Cas13 protein. In the CRISPR Cas13 protein, uh, the first steps they amplify the target RNA targets with the uh, amplification methods. Uh, after that, they uh, convert that uh, those uh, amplicons to RNA because the Cas13 protein RNA. And after the Cas13 protein recognizes the target by using a CRNA which acts as a bridge between the Cas14 and the target, it can uh, show the transcribed activity. So the tracking uh, cleavage activity means that it can uh, actually cut the non-surrounding, uh, non-target uh, nucleic acid RNA. So by using a recorder, which consists of a fluorescent uh, dye and a quencher and an RNA, uh, we can uh, detect the target because the cat is going to cut this recorder and we're going to get the uh, but most of the uh, CRISPR systems so far use an amplification method uh, to reach a uh, uh, high sensitivity. Uh, and because uh, this amplification method uh, can complicate the system and also uh, increase the possibility of contamination, uh, we would really like to remove this uh, and uh, come up with new ideas to improve the, uh, the system performance. In one of our previous studies, we looked into a different methods to improve the, uh, the performance of the CRISPR system. And we realized one of the techniques that can give us a comparable uh, uh, improvement is digitalization, uh, as you can see in here. So as my previous uh, uh, colleagues also talked about the uh, digital assay, in digital assay, we uh, actually uh, partition the, the assay into uh, hundreds and millions of partitions and based on the number of positive wells uh, and using a Poisson statistic we can quantify the concentration of the target and uh, the other uh, other good uh, uh, advantages of the digital assay is because it's an endpoint measurement it enables the nuclear assay quantification independent of the reaction uh, efficiency so far different methods have been used for digitalization techniques such as droplet based and Microchamber uh, fabrication, but all of these methods need a very complicated fabrication technique and also need a complicated quality control system. So that's why in our study we wanted to develop a simple amplification CRISPR system for absolute quantification uh, of uh, RNA. So in our system, we uh, come up with a SAM technique uh, to easily digitalize the assay. So in our system, uh, we're using a membrane, commercial membrane, uh, to digitalize, uh, digitalize the assay. Uh, so in our uh, device, we uh, to handle the membrane easily. We come up with a sand device, which is a sandwich, uh, uh, we, we sandwich the membrane between the PMM holder and the space. And uh, we, uh, first step, we characterize the membrane, and then we come up with four uh, simple steps to digitalize the, the assay inside those membranes. To do that, we put the uh, sample on top of the glass, 
and then uh, we put uh, the capillary force to feed the membrane, and then we add the mineral oil on top of to feed the top of the membrane, and then uh, to remove uh, the so so far most of the work can be cleared, but there is a thin layer uh, of the uh, acid on bottom of the membrane. So to remove that, we slowly peel off the uh, the, the, the stand from the glass. And we also do a treatment to make this membrane hydrophobic, uh, sorry, hydrophobic. So because the membranes are hydrophobic and the glass are hydrophobic, we can get rid of this excess paper. And at the end, we uh, seal the whole membrane. And after that, we evaluate the filling process using this technique. And we realize we never can actually uh, fill all the uh, pores inside the membrane. But the good thing about our system uh, was that even in the negative reaction, we actually can get some fluorescent signal. Uh, so therefore, in our system, we just want to uh, use uh, the feeling force uh, uh, in the system as our quantification. So we're not going to look into the force that has not been here. So after coming to, uh, up with this sampling technique, we wanted to use this sample uh, for quantifying the HIV uh, uh, HIV one. So what we did first, we used the sand technique to uh, fill the membranes with uh, this acid similar to the shell life, but without any amplification, just the protein, the uh, cascading protein, the reporters and the target. And then we do a, do a, a typical fluorescent imaging with a motorized stage because uh, to cover the whole membrane, we need uh, neither 24 uh, images. And after that, uh, to differentiate between the positive and negative, uh, we just uh, use a K-means typical uh, code in MATLAB uh, to differentiate between positive and negative force. And after that, based on the number of force, the uh, positive force, and using the Boston statistics, uh, we could uh, uh, quantify the HIV term. So before we go to the, uh, the, the digital assay, we wanted to uh, develop our assay and uh, uh, actually optimize the assay. So to do that, the uh, people have shown that different CRNA sequences can actually affect uh, the performance of the uh, CRISPR as it can affect and uh, improve it. So that's why we designed five different CRNAs in the uh, uh, HIV genome, and also we uh, uh, synthesized five uh, targets around those five CRNAs, and we cross check five, uh, all five CRNAs and targets together. So. This result that results showed uh, two things. First, our assay showed perfect specificity because uh, the only cases that we got the fluorescent image was when the CRNA and the targets were matched. And also, we realized CRNA 1 and 4 showed the highest uh, transcleavage activity. So that's why we chose CRNA 1 and 4 for the next observation. In the next uh, segment, we actually uh, run the uh, Michaelis mental study, which was the uh, enzymatic properties of this uh, enzyme, uh, which uh, are the cas protein combined with the CRNA. And they found out the CRNA was actually can cut the reporters two times faster than CRNA. And also, uh, we uh, measured the sensitivity of the and limit of detection of the acid using CRNA 1 and 4. And we found out that CRNA 1 actually can give us a limit of detection around 20 uh, femtomoles. So that's why for our digital assay, we're going to, uh, to just use CRNA for, uh, for our system. Uh, in the next step, we study the effect of the uh, reaction time on the assay performance. We run the uh, assay at different reaction times, as, uh, as you can see, based on the fluorescent images and also fluorescent intensity uh, results that we got. As the reaction times increases, we get more positive force because uh, the reaction time is going to cut more reporters. But to look at it more carefully, we measure the uh, number of positive pores per total of number of field uh, uh, pores, which called, we call PPR in short. And we realize that after 30 minute reaction, we're not going to get more positive pores. So that means that our reaction time, it was all the, uh, the, it was all the pores, uh, positive pores that we got. So that's why in our system, we're going to just use 30 minute reaction. And after that, we evaluate the analytical performance of our system uh, uh, based on the results that we got. Uh, our IC uh, actually showed that it can span, uh, showed the uh, span to four orders of magnitude of dynamic range from 100 uh, amptomolar 
to one picomolar, and also our system got the uh, uh, system of antimolar compound with the actual uh, bulk acid, which got 20 pentamolar, which improved to like and in the next step, we uh, did the resolution test uh, with the contrary plasma sample. Uh, so with this experiment, first we showed that our uh, assay actually can uh, quantify the target that has been extracted from the plasma perfect. And also we ran a t-test to uh, find out the resolution. And based on the p-value that we got from the t-test, we found out that our system can differentiate between the, uh, the system uh, with 41 antimolar with 95% confidence. And at the end, uh, we also looked into 20 clinical samples that got from male patients. And uh, first we run the uh, uh, assay with uh, using the gold standard method, the uh, RT-PCR, and then we compare the results of the RT-PCR, which are the CT values uh, uh, with the PCR uh, values that we got from our uh, digital CRISPR. And uh, the result uh, matched very well, which showed the, the potential of our system for actually quantifying the clinical sample. And in summary, we demonstrate uh, the, the automated membrane based technique to digitalize the CRISPR assay and quantify uh, uh, the HIV RNA without any amplification. Our analytical performance shows that we can span four orders of magnitude between 100 antimolar to 1 picomolar uh, as fast as 10 minutes. And the overall, as it showed, the resolution of 42 antimolar with 90% uh, confidence. And also with the clinical samples, our system showed through agreement with RT and PCR. Uh, and at the end, I want to thank uh, my brother, Dr. Kumar, and also my lab mate, and for having me for this class. Uh, thank you for